Nintendo Switch. First thing you want to do is check the port. And this port looks pretty good. It is not structurally compromised in any way that I can tell. Well, that center piece is a little loose, so it could be structurally compromised. So it might still be okay to quickly do a power test. All right, let's real quickly see what it's doing. We are looking at PSU channel one, the amp meter. See what we're getting. We're getting 0 0.05 on that side, 0 0.05 on that side. This video is brought to you by PCB Way. They have some holiday specials going on. I'll tell you about them in just a bit. Okay, we've opened up the switch and we can do some initial testing from here. All right, we'll begin our testing around the M92T36. And the first capacitor we're gonna test is actually tied to Pi 3 USB on the back. It ties to Pi 3 USB on the back through the M92T36. And the line we do not want short of the ground is the line going to the chip. And it appears to be okay. Now let's check all the other lines on these capacitors. The line's going to the chip. Everything looks okay so far. Now this capacitor right here has two lines going to the chip, so one side will always be ground. As long as one side is ground, you're good. Let's check our CPU capacitor. If this one is short, it's usually not good news for the device. And test our MOSFETs. Uh-oh, that's shorted. Check our little filter. All right, we're going to move up here and check out our invincible fuse and see if it's still being invincible. It is. Let's check our test pads. None of these should have a pathway to ground. Test around our BQ 24-1A3. This coil should not have a pathway to ground, but it should have continuity going through the coil. Now the BQ 24-1A3 has a couple of capacitors with multiple lines going to the chip. You just need to know which side to test really. And it looks okay. The only time I've had experience with these MOSFETs being a problem is when the M92T36 was shorted. This capacitor right here was shorted the last time I ran into those being short. So we might actually have our first MOSFET failure. Could it be we have an actual MOSFET issue or is our issue related to the port? So right now I can't draw any definitive conclusions with this on the board. While I'm setting up my equipment, I'll throw up my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon Associate links in the description. If you head to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, or if you buy anything during that session, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it, and it won't cost you an extra dime. Let's flood our anchor points with flux. The flux is in the description under consumables, and we'll flood our anchors with bismuth and tin, which will turn our unleaded solder into a low melt. As we've had some structural damage, I'm going to go ahead and lock my hemostats onto the port so that I can remove it gracefully. I'm going to bring the sauce. There we go. It looks like a clean pool. Okay, it doesn't appear that we have any bridged pins, so they will not interfere with our testing. And we need to test this MOSFET area again. Find ourselves a reliable ground. And it is still shorted. Question is, do we have a shorted MOSFET or do we have a shorted M92T36? I bet my thermal camera can tell us if it's the MOSFET or the M92T36. PCB Way is having a big Christmas sale on many things including PCB, like PC prototyping, PCB assembly, FPC and rigid flex, and advanced PCB. Head over to PCBWay.com and click the banner to get started. As we can see, the M92T36 is definitely getting warm. Let's pull the chip and then we will test again. Let's test again. Did that clear our short in the MOSFET area? Yes, it did. So that's a brand new presentation I've never run into. Let's put a new chip on, then we'll test again to make sure our short does not reappear. When we place a chip, we need to make sure that the solder has grabbed the chip before you let go. Center it up, move your heat, let it tack down, and then press down. Not too hard. Good enough to push it flat to the board. Remove the heat. Easy peasy. Before we test, I'm going to clean up the pushed out solder. Careful not to bridge anything when you're cleaning this up. Excellent. Do we have a new short? 
And the answer is no, we do not have a new short. Interesting thing to note, we definitely had more damage than we thought. The anchor points are still in the joints, and it looks like we might have a little bit of pull. Yeah, we have a little bit of a weakened traces that we're going to have to be mindful of. That weakened one while we clean up. Anchor is removed. Now we need to do some really careful cleanup. With wick, you just want to glide even over the anchor joints. Putting more pressure on the wick will not make it work better. Complicating things. I think that entire top row is oxidized. We have our pin grinder. We're very gently going to go over these pads just to scrape off this oxidization so they will take solder. With the very lightest touch, surface grinding these pads. I have to be exceptionally careful on the last one. I don't think I even need to do the last one. Should be good enough. In order to tend them, we're going to put a ball of solder on the tip, and then we're just going to glide over the pads with the ball, trying not to even make contact with the iron itself. And they are taking solder. Very good. And we'll just paint our pins. Sexy. And then we'll place our port. We're going to solder the anchors. We're going to apply a ball of solder to our tip just to get things going. And then we'll feed in a reasonably generous amount into the anchor. Rub it in a little bit. Outer ones don't take quite as much. That is excellent feed through. Next step is to clean the board off thoroughly. I hope this video is being helpful to you in your repair journey. Just a reminder, if this is something beyond what you want to try yourself, I do offer these services. Just head over to micromage.repair. Click free quote, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you personally. Let's perform our power tests. What we want to see here is just kind of a quick spike in amperage and we want it to come right back down. Okay, that looks normal. No hanging, excellent. That looks normal. No hanging, excellent. Now using our modified iPhone power squid, we're going to activate the switch using our OEM charger. Just a real quick plug in and plug out. And what we want to see here is a steady increase in amperage. And it looks like it's booting just fine. Excellent. Okay, we've pulled up our capture. Let's see if we are docking. Okay, let's try it the other way. Well, it looks like we're going to have to replace the Pi 3 USB as well. So where schematics would be awesome. The chip is down, but it didn't center for us too well, so we need to nudge it over. I think we got it there. Nice and aligned. And we're going to prompt to boot again. Give it time to boot. Let's try our dongle again. And see if we're now docking. And we are. Excellent. Yay for us. All right, the switch is back up and running on its own battery. And as you can see, we are charging at 15 volts, 0.85 amps. Let's connect their Joy-Cons. Make sure they are recognizing and charging. And they are. Yes, we have Bluetooth. And we have Wi-Fi. All right, and that was a really interesting repair. This thing is the bomb. If you enjoyed this video, give me a favor. Click that one right there, and I'll see you there.